It's very rare nowadays for a TV show to capture the mainstream audience, get people talking, celebrating the show, getting excited for future episodes. But that's exactly what Fallout has done. Much like Rings of Power, this is another big budget TV series on Amazon Prime. Unlike Rings of Power though, it's not a steaming pile of crap. Let's talk about it. Before I get started on the spoiler-free review, I'd be foolish if I didn't ask you to subscribe to the channel. Adam does movies. That's right, it's a movie channel. Once in a while, I'll dip my balls into the TV shows, but I like to stick with films. So if you like highbrow commentary, obviously this is the place for it. Hit subscribe, like the video if you would be so inclined, and let's talk about Fallout for a little while. For the none of you that don't know this, Fallout is based on a video game franchise that spanned multiple consoles, big on PC. It's an open world RPG that uh, I just, I tried them, I'm a big gamer, but this is my least probably favorite type of genre. Listen, I already work around the clock, so playing a video game that feels like more work, not really my cup of tea. I get why people like it though, it is a very cool, atmospheric, post-apocalyptic world with these mysterious vaults, these cool looking mech armor suited dudes going around, ripping off limbs, fighting zombie-esque people. It's a good time. It's got a really cool premise, and it works perfectly for a TV series, it turns out. As a gamer, I imagine you're eating really well with this series. I can't speak to that because again, I've only played a couple hours of one of them. I'm not even sure which one it was. I believe it was on like the PlayStation 3. So you could probably figure it out from there. Aesthetically, it looks very much like the game, the colors, the outfits, the logo, the character designs. It's all very much spot on. I'm gonna jump out on a radioactive limb and assume that the McLean family, who this TV series focuses on, is not in the video game, but maybe I'm wrong there. Either way, we follow a young woman, Lucy McLean. She's gonna be the main protagonist. Cute as all hell, looks great. Basically a love child of Christina Ricci and Zoe Deschanel. That, that, that's hot, that's hot. She looks great. Her brother is also in this. He's kind of in the background more doing his whole vault mystery thing. He's gonna get more screen time as the story progresses, doing his solo shaggy Scooby-Doo antics, but really, Lucy's the main focus. Another primary character is played by Walter Goggins. His name is Cooper Howard. He operates as both a protagonist and antagonist, as we have flashbacks where he's very much on the good side of history, it would seem, and we have present day where he's just a disfigured, disgruntled employee. A lone ranger who shoots first and asks questions never. This guy's rough and tumble, and he looks like shit. Probably due to the fact that the world is covered in radiation. The only safe haven are the 100 vaults tucked away in different corners of the earth. And the people inside of them are none the wiser. They've never stepped foot out. They don't know what's going on up top on the surface. And that's where the story is going to take place. Lucy, in the first episode, is going to bid adieu, head out into the Wild West on a mission to retrieve her father who's been kidnapped. Is it kidnapped when you're an adult? Dadnapped. Her path is gonna cross Maximus, who's a member of the Brother of Steel. This is a cult, I suppose, would be the an outfit, if you must. A collective of sorts, who has their hands on a bunch of ammunition, including power armor, which is this badass tech, these giant mech suits that you walk around in, you break bones, you blast through pretty much anything. Um, and we're gonna be seeing a lot of this as Maximus suits up. And that's going to be the chink in the armor for me because this character, and maybe it's more so the actor, that I just never really jived with in this series. Now, before I get too deep in, I enjoyed Fallout. I thought it was a very entertaining show. It's not without flaws. Do I think it's as amazing as everyone else appears to? No, but I'm in. I'm excited for season two. They left me on some fun cliffhangers. Anyway, I don't really care for this character. He kind of looks dumbfounded all the time. He makes a lot of stupid choices. The actor has a poor man's Denzel Washington look to him without any of the swagger or the charm. And I, I, my wife was like, maybe it's just bad writing. And I go, ah, I, don't, I just don't think this guy was right for the role. And that's okay that sometimes there's a miscast and that's where I'm at with this actor. In contrast, Ella Purnell as Lucy 
terrific job all around. She's got some wit to her. She's clueless most of the time, but she's also a badass as she's been trained in her youth in the vault. She's grown up being kind of a superstar amongst her peers. And you find out a lot of stuff about her later, great reveals, and the way this actress kind of reacts to things feels natural. And again, it, there's just a way to frame up certain people to make them look great, even in bad conditions. And unfortunately, Maximus isn't getting that, but Lucy very much does. We gotta shout out Walton Goggins, or you hate this guy, but part of you is kind of rooting for him. You want to understand where he's coming from. You wanna know how he got the way he did. I find myself getting very annoyed with a lot of TV streaming shows that feel very padded out for the sake of having more seasons and getting people watching. This show does not feel like that. It feels like it has a good pace. There's eight episodes, they're about an hour long each. I never found myself annoyed with anything. I never felt they were going too slow with things. It has a very good pace all around. There is a lot of mystery. I do wish they maybe went a little further with some of the storylines. There's a lot left hanging for season two. It's just not that contained is I guess the only real big gripe I have with it. But again, I'm very much on board and clearly they're gonna get a season two. It's already been greenlit, so no harm, no foul. We'll hopefully wrap up a couple of the threads as we move forward. So if you're on the fence and you haven't watched it, what can you expect? Well, you can expect a very violent, gory, kinda gross show. And by kinda, I mean it's pretty damn gross. Once episode three hits, that's when all bets are off and the show doesn't give a shit anymore about your feelings and your comfort level. There's some pretty gross scenes in this thing. People eating each other, limbs getting dismembered, carrying around heads. Uh, it, it's pretty intense, so you gotta have the stomach for it. And the reason it's intense is because there's some great practical effects work, there's brilliant CG going on. I rarely found myself going, well, that doesn't look very good, or wow, you can tell this is a TV show, very low budget. No, it has a great look to it, and it all felt very cohesive. Even when they go to the past, it has a style, it has a vibe that carries on into the present stuff. The music, the setting, it can all of course be attributed to the video game, but the filmmakers, the designers, everybody did a great job making it one-to-one -one or as close as they could to the video game. And this is something I don't think I ever say, but I would really like a spin-off of this show that focuses primarily on the vaults themselves. They said there's 100 vaults in the show, or might be more, maybe I misheard, but I'm pretty sure there's at least 100. You can go with the vaults as a TV series and we can we could almost go like X-Files with it, maybe do eight or 10 a season. And I mean, that's that takes you 10 seasons out right there. Each episode could be self-contained because it's in a vault and you could focus on that vault. They're all different. The vaults are all unique. Different things are happening in there. And so a show focus on one an episode would be really cool. And of course you could have a, a through line as it goes. There could be that big plot, that centralized plot that kind of ties everything together. But that would be a fun spinoff. Or you just keep it contained within the show. But as it stands, it seems like Lucy's gonna still be the central figure, Maximus to a certain degree, and of course the ghoul. This is our trio that we're gonna be focusing on. And two of the three characters I'm on board with, so they're doing okay in my book. Well, there you have it. My thoughts on Fallout, I don't typically, again, do shows, but on occasion if something's really popping off and I found myself enjoying it or really hating it and have stuff to say, I'll let you know here. But again, it's a movie channel. I would love if you subscribed. Adam does movies, just hit that subscribe button. It's free, believe it or not. It costs you nothing. Same with liking the video. If you really like what I'm doing, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash Adam does movies. There's different tier levels with different perks. And I have a second channel, Adam does rants. It's, it's very silly, fun rants about some pretty stupid first world problems. Occasionally I, I will talk about some of the bigger things, but I keep it loose and simple and fun. Okay, those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Do you think this show's awesome? Do you think it's overrated? Are you kind of with me where it is pretty damn solid and you're excited for more? Let me know and hopefully I'll see you next time.